Hello, um, this is going to be the second part of my videos regarding uh, taking and passing the LMSW exam. A couple things I forgot in my first uh, video that discussed uh, registering and applying and studying. Um, another thing that I did was I went over the entire NASW Code of Ethics, which is available um, on the NASW website. That was something I did, and that came into play, so it's important to be aware of procedures and ethical boundaries and ethical dilemmas and what you do uh, in that in those situations. And the the study guide book does go over some of that as well, um, but you might as well just go to the source and go over the code of ethics from NASW and that will help out. Um, I've already forgotten the second thing that I allegedly forgot, so let's just move on. So you have applied and gotten your um, a, approval, your application approval, and you have um, registered for uh, the test through ASWB, and you have scheduled your test through Pearson at a testing center. So, and you've been kind of studying here and there and just whatever is most helpful to you. Um, so you are going to arrive very early. Um, my test was at 8 and I arrived probably about 7.15 but the instructions which you will get after you uh, do a schedule a test date um, are very thorough and they tell you to arrive 30 minutes early. Anyway, so I did that and um, the people who work at the testing center are very friendly. It is a extremely strict and calculated situation. Um, you do this and then you do this and you do this and you do this and they will scan your palm on this device that I've never seen before and they do that several times and they take your picture um, and you put your stuff in a locker, You they, they will put your phone in a sealed bag, um, you're not allowed to leave the floor, you're not allowed access to your locker again. You have four hours to take the exam. Um, when I did the practice test, because I, again, I have kids, I could never take it all in one setting. So the practice test allows you to stop and then go back and stop and go back. Uh, and it took me probably the whole day, but at the same time, it it keeps your time. So I still took about over, over three hours to take the practice exam. Um, and and then you're uh, put in a little testing seat with a computer and you're just free to go and you're given a little kind of whiteboard notebook thing but if you write on it you're not allowed to erase it you are being videotaped and audio taped and um, you do not get up out of your chair you raise your hand there's uh, a monitor who is watching, and she's more than they're more than willing to help out with anything that you need. They certainly cannot help with content, um, but if you're having any issues or you need to get up and stretch, you can do that. So there are no authorized breaks whatsoever. You you can take a break. It's considered an unauthorized break, and your testing time does not stop. It keeps going, and you have to be scanned out, and then scanned back in, and you cannot leave the floor. Um, the restrooms are not in the testing center; they're outside and kind of down the way. So um, when I so I will tell you this. Um, the questions that were on the exam, they're not, they're not the practice exam test score questions. 
there's such a massive bank of questions that they draw from. Um, and there were so many times where I just felt there were probably four questions out of 170 where I really had no clue. I had no clue. I had never heard this term before. I had never uh, heard this concept before where it really was just a complete guess. Um, doing all of the work with the practice exam helped me be able to read the questions and all of the answers so clearly in a way that as I was reading through the answers, I was able to quickly say, that's not it, that's not it. And some of them were like that. Some of them were, the answer was so clear. One of the biggest tips that I read and that was given in this book was read every single answer, multiple choice. Just read through every single one of them. Even if you think you know it for sure, read every single multiple choice. There were several times where I read through each one so carefully and my instinct would say that this one was right, but then when I would go back and look, I could tell like, oh no, that's that little word right there is why that's not correct. And that helps me a lot. Um, you sign a, you know, a, 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 a you know, a confidentiality agreement uh, I cannot and I cannot give out any questions that were on the exam. Um, and I'll tell you that even if I did, nothing would help. It, it wouldn't help. It, it was brutal. Um, it's, it's just it takes a, a long time and it just it just keeps coming at you and coming at you and it, it's just brutal, but you have options of, uh, marking a question and then you can review it later or you can go back and forth you can skip something just mark it um, and then you can come back to it uh, by when I got to question 110 I realized that my eyes were just glazed over and I was reading the same thing, the same, all the same lines over and over and over again and nothing was getting in my brain. Now, I will say this though, I have been undergoing so much stress this past week that I've been waking up earlier and earlier and earlier and by, by that I mean 5 and then 4.30 and then 4 and then on my testing day when you're supposed to get as much sleep as possible I woke up at 3 and my brain turned on and there were no mindfulness techniques that I could use to turn it back off and so I just got up and started setting again so I was crashing pretty hard by question 110 and what I was aware of was that it would not help me to stay there and keep trying to push through. So I took a break. And please take breaks. You'll be fine. There's more than enough time. Take a break. I actually, um, I just went out. I went potty kind of took the long way to walk back around and it just absolutely helped. That that helped. Take a break. If you're reading the same thing over and over and over again and the words are all going here and there and you're not getting anything, just take a break, please, for yourself. It's for your own good in the long run. Um, and I was getting nervous as the... Um, number was getting up to, you know, okay, I'm on question 165, 167, and you just realize that you're going to be done in a few minutes and you're going to press that button and it's going to give you your pass or fail immediately, immediately do you, you know if you passed. And you, for, so for me, I just felt like the culmination of several, several years and so much hard work were all going to like culminate right there 
in four letters after I pressed the final button. And I would start to get nervous. And then I would just think, that's not going to help me. Being nervous is not going to help me. And I'm here and I've done my work. I've done my work. So whatever, I, I got this. I got this. Um, and so then at the end, I went back and I went through all of the answers that I had marked or, or skipped. And there were a few that I really, you know, kind of went and changed. Uh, there were a few, like I said, that I just had no clue. I've never heard anything about, I've never learned about these concepts before, ever. And I did not read my study guide cover to cover. I did not. I think that if I had, maybe I would have, you know, known those questions. Maybe. Who knows? Because um, this is not authorized by... ASWB, this book, um, it's not authorized by them. It's, it's, it's not, but it, it tries to, it tries so hard to be as most accurate as possible. And I think it does a very profound job. Um, so then I just get to that. You get to the end and you say, okay, I'm fine. I'm done. And it keeps asking you, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? And then it takes you through a 10 question survey and you you just want to punch things at that point. Um, and then you just say, you know, are you sure? Okay. And then boom, pass. And I was so happy. It's hard not to scream. For me, uh, I was so happy. Tears, happy tears are, are running down. And um, you're in a testing room with many other people that are also taking exams. Not necessarily and probably not likely the same exam you're even taking. But um, so you can't scream. You just can't. Uh, and then the monitor knows immediately that you are done. And he comes out. And he gets your stuff and he checks you out and then you get up and um, I just really kind of, so then he takes you kind of out of the room and you do your, your palm scan and all that stuff. And uh, I just started saying, I passed and just happy tears. And I could almost start crying again now because oh, I did it. I did it. Um, and then you go back out to the front, and that guy hands you uh, a piece of paper, a printout, and it it's and it just says it's a con it's unofficial score report, and it gives you whether you passed or failed, and the date that you took the test, and it says um, it says it gives you the results. In as much as it tells you how many you had to get right and how many you got right. But at no point will you ever know which questions you got right or wrong. Um, which is kind of sad, but okay. Um, so it's an interesting um, equation that they use. Typically, you would it's a hundred... Okay, it's a 170 question test. Several of them, and I don't remember the number, but several of the questions are unscored because they're being used for future tests versions, okay? And then you have to get 100 questions correct. Now, if the questions you're given are more difficult, you have to get fewer correct. If your questions are easier, then you would have to get closer to 100 correct, okay? So I kind of, I kind of kicked some major ass, like majorly. Um, so, and then that's what it tells you. So for me, it said that I had to get 95 correct answers 
and I answered 126 questions correctly. Now, I have no idea if where that falls, is that below average, normal, is that, is that normal? Um, I just know, and I don't even care, and I don't want to know. Um, for me, that feels amazing. That's how it feels for me. And I did it. Um, and that's that. That is that. And I wish you all the best. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. And I'm happy, happy to help you. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not done yet. <sighs> Later, when I was processing everything, those questions were all over the board. I mean... They went everywhere. They went everywhere. Hospital social work, school social work, domestic violence, um, uh, lesbian and gay relationships, um, medical, uh, common medications that are used in treating uh, typical uh, issues, medical issues, um, common symptoms of withdrawal from specific drugs or alcohol, um, body systems, so many policy questions and um, community organizations, lots of group, uh, group questions, lots of um, if you were a family therapist, if you were doing couples therapy, one of the main things, watch this, watch this so carefully when you're taking the exam is the questions will sometimes say the social worker, the social work intern or the social work supervisor or the social worker. Those are really, really important pieces of little pieces of information that you need to pay attention to because that will determine the best course of action. Um, for the answers and um, they're all over the board and I have to I'm going to tell you honestly hold on I'm gonna turn the light on cuz it's getting when I look back at what I studied and whether it helped me I'm gonna tell you this and this is just me and this is my own experience um, and I'm not trying to discourage anybody I'm just being honest. This is my experience. I believe I did as well as I did because I'm a 42-year-old woman with a ton of life experience. Um, I have children with IEPs. Therefore, I was completely familiar with that topic. Um, years and years and years and years ago, I went to massage therapy school and learned all about body systems. Um, this past internship that I had was the most incredible. I was surrounded by amazing supervision and other therapists. Um, but even more than that, it was an integrative team. So I got to hear about all the medication and withdrawals and symptoms of several different, um, diagnoses and, all of that was in there in my brain and it would not have been at all if if I don't know I don't know I'm just I'm just sharing my experience and telling you honestly there was so much that I knew because I knew it I know that doesn't help <sighs> I'm sorry I can't be like more Mary Poppins and say you got this because I don't know. I really just don't know. And however, I will tell you this. I will tell you this. There is an 80% pass rate of this exam. Come on. You can do it. Statistically, you can do it. So there's that. Um, but... Uh, I hope that helps a little bit, a little bit. Thanks.